Hello, everybody. Hello and welcome. I'm Lynn from Ellen J. Goods. I'm so glad you're here today. We've got a fun project to share with you, and it's going to be how to make flexible resin molds that stay put. So stay tuned for that. Who knew um, you could make flexible resin molds? Well, I did. I and if you were a part of our shadow box uh, yep. private workshop group, you might have seen this as a demonstration in one of our lessons. That's where I first saw it, and I was absolutely blown we away. We were blown away. I was That's blown right. away. Well, welcome. Ella J. Goods, a little brick and mortar shop here in Medina, New York. Just a little bitty, bitty brick and mortar <laughs> shop in a little bitty town right here. <laughs> Good old little bitty Western New York. You're going to give me a giggle right out of the gate. <laughs> anyway, we're, we are always happy to have you visit here. Our renovation of the whole back area is just about done. Yeah. I think I said improve lighting about 87 times. But really within like 48 and, hours, it was improved. And it was improved. Exactly. JR has a list and he just... Do, 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 and he does it. So He is a... He makes dreams come true. <laughs> he does. You're making my dreams come true. He really true. does, though. Do, 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 do. Well, yes. And if you cannot visit us here at the shop, please know that you can always find us on all of our social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of that good stuff. And you can also find us at ellenjgoods.com. So that said, what are we going to make today? If you're part of our text group, you got a little sneak peek of a wreath that we are going to be creating. We have just a few of these wreaths, which are absolutely beautiful on their own, but they're a nice oval just filled with beautiful assorted fur. Look at that. Oh Aww. my gosh, that should be your new profile Aww. picture. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I love it. Um, Oh, more came. Good. Okay. And so we're going to use one of these and because I want to take one home for myself. That leaves two left in the shop. But we're going to decorate this up with a little bird's nest and lots of IOD toadstool molds that I'm going to do with resin. And we're going to make them all flexible on you. Okay. I think it's just amazing how you just change the shape of a wreath a little bit. And yes. it's just and it becomes a something whole new wild yeah. world of wreaths. Yeah, I love. I just world. love it. Yeah, yes, for sure. I wonder sure. if you could do it sideways too, probably. Oh my gosh, an oval like this. Like yeah. if I had, this is a really nice wreath. Yeah, though. It is. Nice oval wreath like that would yeah. be yeah. beautiful to who even is, frame something. Put it around your L and J goods. I know, I know. Look at that. It would look good even just with that little bit off mm -hmm. so off center with a big bow. Have Great there. big bow right there. Cut right. Yeah, I love you it. You know what, Shirley? I don't cut grapevines, and I'll tell you why. Because sometimes there's poison ivy mixed in with grapevines. <laughs> yeah, I've done that And it already. doesn't go with my... I've done that already. My thing. Yeah. Oh, I've done it many times over the course of a lifetime. So, Megan, do we have anybody following? Yes. Watching us today? Yes. Hey. Mary Casey is back to being first again. Well, I you know. Like she, was, she was slacking a little bit. I noticed, actually, when I went to review some comments and questions from our live on Monday when we did that transferware stuff, um, I saw Mary Casey was the first one to pop on. Yeah, it was her first comment. So, Mary, welcome back to being first place. <laughs> I mean, technically, we've got to, everybody pop all of these people popped in at I'm gonna name the names of the two people everybody who came in at the two min at within two minutes. Okay? Okay. Mary Casey, Laura Hall, Sandy, Shannon, Laura Roy, Mary Jo, Nina, Tegan, Carol, and and Nina even shared bonus points for you. Oh Barbara, Charlotte. Okay, that's our two minute marks on Facebook. I love everyone who's here, but I just want to give those people a shout out who just Thank were just you so, so excited to be you here. You know what that means? I think that means that they probably have their notifications turned on. Now, the, the rest of the people were within a minute of them. Oh, so they're so, pretty great. So they, too. you guys all jump on. That's yes. awesome. And I can't Thank see you. the times on Facebook. YouTube. On YouTube, but, yeah. But I'm going to tell you the top, my top five here. <laughs> We got Patrice first, Deb Bird, Joey Olson, Patty Levine, Diane Collins, 
Charlotte Nance, and Kathy P. That's Hello, five, everybody. So. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, these these folks that are that we just named out, and and of course there are many others oh that are, have joined us. Yes. Yes. we love you all, and I'm sure we I'll do. be talking to you we throughout do. this um, One thing that we will say is how much we appreciate when you um, share or um, at least leave a comment, ask a question, give us a thumbs up, go ahead and follow and subscribe and do all those social media things that um, that cost you nothing as you watch our, our, I think, next level tutorial. If by next level, I mean, I think really awesome projects mm -hmm. and showing you start to finish and very often, no matter how excruciatingly long, uh, how I mess up, actually, and then fix it. Next week, I will call out the last five people who hung on to the very bitter I end, know, which so many of you do. And oh we my goodness, and we appreciate it so much. But, you know, and it's very interesting, you know, in this world of like everything fast and reels and shorts and everything quick quick, quick. And, and I do edited videos too. So if this isn't your vibe, go on YouTube up at the top. There's, there's a place that says videos, live, playlists, community, shorts. You can click on any one of those and see any one of those categories. So I would encourage you to do that if you're if you don't dig <laughs> sitting around for two hours. <laughs> or sometimes you might want to mix. You might be able to hang out with us here for thirty minutes. And then you're like, I can't take this anymore. I'll wait and watch the edit. I version. I will say though, I got some really awesome feedback from and according to the views on YouTube and on um, Facebook, I got some really great feedback despite the length of that live, that many, many of you appreciated um, spending that time with us because it was truly like a classroom situation, a learning situation where you followed along every step of the way. And it wasn't like one of my edited videos or where I, you know, play um, the baker and the chef on TV where, oh, magically I pull <laughs> out a, a tray of cookies. It's already done. You so, do a lot of prep. Though, I, I do. I do a lot of prep. Even that day you did, I did a lot, lot of prep. prep. Yes. Yes, I did. So don't be too hard on yourself because I I won't. I won't. So anyway, let's jump to it and can, turn the camera down. Can and... I just say hi to Jennifer Priest who just found us yesterday? Oh, Jennifer, of course. Welcome. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Also, Suzanne has a real bird's nest in her garage door and now she can't get into her garage. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you know what kind of bird it is? In the, in the wreath on her garage door. Oh, that happens. That certainly <laughs> happens. Yes. Today I'm going to use the iconic, iconic toadstool <laughs> mold um, because it's fabulous and wonderful. And I love the large scale of these mushrooms, um, some of these mushrooms. So you, you got it all. You got small ones, you got big ones. And, and so what I'm going to show you is a little trick that I do to help to create shaped, see, I don't know. Yeah, look at that. Look at that shape there. See these? Where I have twisted and turned the stems. I'm going to show you how to do that today. It is like one of my new favorite things that I have uh, figured out how to do. So what I'm going to use is, uh, this is Let's see, it says galvanized steel wire, 15 pound, 20 gauge. This is 20 gauge wire. And what I wanna do is I wanna cut a piece that's long enough to um, give us, let's see. Like I want to be able to have my wire come out from the bottom of my mold, all right? and also reach right up into the tippy top of this mushroom right here, okay? Um, I wanna leave a good length of this because now in the shadow box class, we, we stuck these into foam. So you could use these into in floral arrangements or whatever. And then in here, I think I'm gonna do this one too. Um, I'm just kind of shaping this around the shape 
of my mold right here. And then I'm just gonna twist off the end there and I'll go ahead and, and cut that. Shirley already did several of these for me and she cut some wire ahead. So I don't know if it's me that does all the profits. Yeah, it's usually teamwork. <laughs> yes. Right? So so we'll get back to this in a minute. But you just, are the mastermind of it. Well, I yeah, I to be fair. Yes, I, I am. Okay, so as I am taking my wire and getting it ready in advance to um to to put into my resin, I'm just pushing this down and I want to make sure that this is going to lay in there so that it'll be completely covered with the resin. All right? That's just one piece right there, right? That's one like piece, that? yep. And it's going to be a little wonky until that resin gets poured in there. All right, so I have that one ready. And then Shirley's already prepared this piece. Um which is going to go, oh, I think we're going to put this one right here, all right? And then I'm going to do another little one right here, okay? So we don't have to wait so long for and pour so much resin here. Okay, so that is what I will do in preparation. Then I'll pour my resin. I'm going to mix up resin, two parts. Um, I, everybody always asks, why is your resin tan? It's because I buy it in gallons, you guys. I you, I cannot find this for resale um, in smaller sizes. So, and we go through a lot of this because we do make a lot of resin castings as well. So we want one to one, part A and part B. So it's gonna take me a second. I know you can't see me pumping this, but do you really need to see me doing that? Okay. You can also use a scale and weigh out your product that way. In fact, I that is one thing I want to get is a digital scale for, so for here. I might actually have one at home you can have. Oh, is that right? A, like a little one, you mean? Yeah, I mean, just, I have a digital scale in my shipping area. Well, yeah, but, but you need one it's that's more for, for cooking. Smoke. Yeah, and it might have... That's actually mine back there is the same is the same as a cooking one I have at home, but I have a littler one that okay. I don't use at all. Okay, I yeah, I would give it a try. Sure. And then I'm just gonna pour both parts together. And I'm gonna give these a quick stir. I wanna stir it completely, and I'll begin to feel that chemical reaction take place where it starts to feel a little bit warm, and that's when you know. We are ready to pour. But you do want to mix this thoroughly. People often ask, well, why do you use the tan resin instead of the white? I use both. Um, I like the tan just because it's not quite as dark, I guess. Oh, dark on it. I was going to try really hard not to get resin on me. It's hard. There I go. Okay, so let's pour this guy first and get that in there. Okay, and it's almost filled. Um, because I'm adding this into the resin, it is going to have, there's going to be a little bit of displacement of the product. And I will just sit this down in here. It cures like an ivory color. Yeah, it's more ivory. They call it tan, but I know Shirley had something going on where she propped these up. But if not, you can just hold them like this. I don't want to do that because I'm going to waste all this resin. Yeah. Hey, so. Come here, could you come here and help me? I just need you to stand over there by Maggie and I need you to just hold this 
with your little tippy tip finger. She's the teeniest tiny. She does. Just like your mama. Okay. And Patty's then, daughter gets married in 17 days. Who's? Patty's. Oh, Patty, I know. That's so exciting. Oh, someone wants to know, how did Ellen J. Good's name come well, to Megan, be? Well, Megan, why don't you take, take that from the top? <laughs> Free Spirit said live streams have taken the place of soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could probably. That really, is so funny. Like we said, you know, we have hesitated doing Patreon um, or anything like that. Um, There's not a lot that we hold back. There really isn't. Now, <laughs> so, and it's like if you really want the down and dirty, probably the best thing to do is come to one of our retreats. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so we're going to hold. And stay in the, or stay in the same hotel with us when we're teaching somewhere. <laughs> And hang out with us after hours. That's You'll right. get the full scoop. Okay. Um, okay, Ellen J. Goods came from, my mom's name is Lynn, JR's name is JR. So L and J. Goods. It's just L like for a, Lynn, J yeah, for JR. L for Lynn, J for JR. So, well, let's talk about it. the reason we chose that name versus. Well, you can talk about that. So Antiques that. and vintage or yes, um, it... Lynn's Antique Treasures. Because when we started out in this in this retail business, we did a lot more um, vintage and thrifted finds. Okay. That Just was... rehabbed furniture. Was yes, we part. did. Because that was a big thing. We were doing that for many years, kind of behind the scenes. Um, before we actually had retail, I know, so, I'm so sorry. Okay, let me hold. I'll hold that. And it's all right. Oh! So that name could apply to anything. I could turn exactly. this into a bakery if I yeah. wanted to someday. So we just wanted to have a name that would reflect our business, no matter how our business would transition. And we knew it would because... Um, trends change, uh, businesses change. You have to be willing to um, adapt and adjust your business to accommodate what's available in the market, what your demographic is, um, what your passion is. And sometimes your passion can shift and change as well. So um, that, is, that is why we chose kind of that uh, generic name versus something that more specifically identified the type of business that we had. Does that make sense? I, I think so. so. Yeah. Mary asks, does the pump on part B of the resin harden? I'm always having problems with the, when the caps harden and make it impossible to open. Well, maybe are you making sure that you are putting the cap A with cap B? I mean, part mm, cap A great. with cap A. Smart. I'm, sounds like someone's done that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. If you mix up those caps, what's going to happen is that chemical reaction is going to happen with anything that's on those the lid remaining. If you put part A cap with on the part B bottle, there could be part B residue. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to react and harden up. Okay. So, whoop. I forgot to ask Shirley how she stands these up. I think she just propped them like this. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Okay. Uh, let me do this one more. And then we'll go ahead and show you what I have, what we've prepared in advance. Just like the cooking shows. Just like the cooking shows. Because then what we're going to do is we are going to, well, we're not going to pour this because look what happened, you guys. I just, look at that, entire pot of resin, hard as a rock. Okay, well, that's all right. It's okay. All right. You kind of have to have like eight molds and uh, 16 hands while you're, if you want to do multiple <laughs> or have or eight Shirley, hours or have Miss Shirley do it <laughs> or have lots of time on your hands, right? So what I'm doing is I'm watching my resin so that it, it's, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna let this completely cure because I want it pliable. 
So I'm kind of watching this to see um, when the best moment is that I can pull out these molds. And I don't want to move on to something else until I pull these because the timing is everything with these. Mm. Okay, so I'm just kind of watching and like they're still very soft around the edge, but they are starting to pull out a little bit. And Lynn did try to warn you. I, was, I wasn't looking at YouTube, I was looking at Facebook. She said, I'm looking at the resin setting up in the cup. You could have made another mushroom for another project. I hate to waste one drop. Now, what, I, what do I have? I have a nice resin puck. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun for the kids to play yes. with. Oh, Lord, how many times have I done that? Oh, my gracious sakes. All right. We are almost there, you guys. I am going to be then priming each of these with the Pentart Bonding Primer. I'm using Fusion, um, Fusion Mineral Paint today. Uh, but I do, I'm telling you, this is my new favorite thing, this bonding primer on resin. It really does make, it gives you that extra adhesion that you might need on a glossy surface. Someone asked um, in the video for Monday, if you're using Debbie's DIY paint, which it which sticks to everything, why are you using a resin or why are you using a bonding uh, primer as well? And I, I think that is a, a valuable question. Um, I think for me, it's the essence of time. Um, you know, Debbie's does have a longer cure time. And so I was doing several processes on, on that with the, with the stamping and then doing the resin and, or not resin, I'm sorry, doing the, um, um, two-step crackle and all of that. So I just, I like to make sure no matter what paint it is, I just want to be sure that it is going to stick. Now, I will tell you this, though, after using the JRV paint, and I, I literally put that over a metal box without doing anything but cleaning that metal box. In fact, surely, if you could grab that on that little end cap, I have a bunch of samples, mm -hmm. but there's a terracotta pot. That, well, you don't have to bring that, but... Um, bring the the red toolbox because I just think that's like the perfect example it's on that little end cap um oh the wooden end cap between the the main shop and the DIY area can you do the same process wire and twisting the stem with air dried clay no wow Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is still soft. All right. So you want to catch this when you can pop it out of the mold, but it's still very warm. It's warm and it's still pliable. And then I've got, check this out. Okay. I've got the ability then to twist and turn my mold because that wire's in there and my resin is soft. And I can create a different little shape so that they're just not all like flat. All right. And I just love that. I think it gives them a little more life is what I want to say. Okay. Okay. So this one, let's see. I could have added more. Yeah, this one isn't quite ready yet. And Mary says she does put the caps right next to the right bottles and oh, wipes Oh, gosh, them. I've never had that happen. That is not a Pentart resin. It's, it is amazing casting resin, right? Yes. Just in the pump, we, which we also sell in white. Okay, you guys. This is the new JRV Cottage Colors. Now, granted, I put a sealer over this part and this part because of the um, transfers that I had applied. But I'm going to flip this around to the back where I did not apply a sealer. And I'm telling you, I cannot rub that off. I cannot scrape this off. Isn't that incredible? I just think that is incredible. And it made me see this beautiful paint 
in a whole new way. <laughs> Have you ever made buttons with molds and resin? No, but what a great idea. Okay. And so um, I would just quickly do my bonding primer over this, and then we'll get on to painting these pretty little mushrooms. So as this hardens off, it's going to really remain stiff like this, all right? Like this one. See how I twisted? I twisted this one. This is hard, and it's not moving anywhere, and it's maintaining the shape that it had when I put that wire in there and twisted it while it was soft. So just a thin coat of the Pentar Bonding Primer. And then we'll put that away. <laughs> oh, speaking of prep, JR and I are working on something that I am so excited about because Okay, it's going to be basically, what do you do when you have something you don't like? <laughs> and, and we're going to show you, uh, this will be an edited video using one of the inlays that has not been one of the most popular inlays, I would say. I don't want to, you know, call out anything right now, but I want to be able to show some really fun ways that we can use it and make it really beautiful and interesting. So there you go. See, I twisted that, gave it a little curve at the top. So good. So, so good. All right. And so then, um, again, you've got these long stems that are great for plucking or pushing into a wreath or into a foam piece to create like a, a little plant stake. I mean, that said, you guys, you could actually take... Um, you, you might be able to get like a little skewer, like a, a little skewer. Um, of course, you can't twist and mold a skewer, but I'm saying you could embed a skewer into the back of one of these molds if you wanted to keep it nice and straight, like I did this one, okay? And then you could pop that into a little plant. Joey, yes, it's an IOD inlay that Annie Sloan designed called Cameo. Wait a minute. Did I say that? Oh, one? I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought she was in. <laughs> I'm always doing like a hundred things on here at once, so I didn't wasn't totally listening to it. I was trying not to throw so, it in like under the bus. I wasn't. But. I don't know if that's what mom was talking about. I'm just saying <laughs> that there is uh, an inlay designed by Annie Sloan, but it's an IOD inlay. Because the question looked ambiguous to me, having not completely listened to what mom said. <laughs> That's right. I'm very sorry. Hey, Shirley. Yeah. My darling, could you please do me a favor and um, run this under some hot water to open it? It's one that I did not, um, I did not open up with a... I didn't do the screw top situation. So I'm using Tuscan Orange. And I'm using Fort York Red. Yes, I took this out of the Thank you. I noticed. get a little bit of wood wick out. My favorite like nature kind of green. Dirt green. Dirt, or, dirt or, green. Not green. Earth dirt. Earth dirt brown. Yes. And uh, I'm just basically going to be using these colors right here. And um, as soon as I get my Victorian lace. The setting on there. Yep. So we'll mix some of this in. Well, we'll also need this to paint the stems. 
So these are the four colors that I'm using. So let's get painting, you guys. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'll just do a red one first. I was telling Megan today, I showed Megan and Shirley a custom uh, uh, decoupage paper that I'll be sharing and you'll you'll get when you're coming to the retreat. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be really pretty. It's such a pretty project that we're going to do with that little, little paper. Okay. Beautiful. I don't want to do them all the same. Um, so I'm going to mix... I'm going to mix uh, some orange into this. Megan encouraged me to do some that were orange. I like them. Mm -hmm. And I can even touch a little bit of that wood wick in there just to dull it down a bit. So I'm kind of mixing all three colors with my brush. And Gilly said, consider a bendy resin skeleton. Oh, yeah. How about that? Annie's making jewelry with resin and molds right now. <gasps> That's fun. I love doing the jewelry. I do. Okay. Have you ever casted two mushrooms and glued them together back to back? Maybe I... glue a thin wire in between. You could do that, certainly. Absolutely. However, if you are going to glue a wire in between, the thickness of that wire is going to prevent you from gluing back to back. if that makes sense. Another little orange mushroom. So those of you that have been interested in how I did that wire or the wire, the um, the technique with the tape, I know Patty uh, Wickersham. There were several people that commented that yes, please show us how you do that. Um, Friday there will be a video on YouTube that shows how I use alcohol inks to create that aged tape look. Anybody have any questions so far? Or I just was able to get up a set of the, these molds casted in resin. In case I know that the toadstool is out of stock and maybe out of stock on our site now, in case you can't get that and you just want the resin castings. All right, so we're gonna let's go ahead and do this guy and these two fellas, and we're just gonna do these in a kind of a little taupey color here. Once these are all in place, oh my gosh, they're going to look so good. Okay. This is fussy fiddly. What it's gauge is the wire? Uh, it is 20 gauge wire. 20 gauge. Who 
who's in the path of the eclipse for Monday? We are. Yeah, I know we are. We will be seeing the total eclipse of the sun. If using a paint without a built-in top coat, do you need to seal molds? Yes. Right? Yes. Melissa said you could use the new apothecary stamps and put names on them. <gasps> oh. Cheryl loves your paint palette. You know what? I picked this up at the dollar store. I used to I used to sell these. Um, had a great story about an antique dental cabinet that um, we found in Wisconsin several years ago, and it was full of all of the milk glass trays for the, you know, all the milk glass trays were in it, and Jr. was just like, oh, seriously, like. You know how heavy that is? I'm like, I'm telling you right now, it is coming back to New York with us. We are not passing this up. And so, reluctantly, you know, he he the guy helped him load it up. And we, we did get a decent price on it. But um, I just, he said, well, we don't need all those trays, do we? And I'm like, uh, yeah, because I can sell all those trays apart from the dental cabinet. And... Um, you know, that's a, it's a win-win right there. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I did. And so they are, we sold them all off over a few years time. Somebody bought the dental cabinet right away. And this is what happens when your paint is still wet, but... Uh, we sell the amazing casting resin right on our site. I'll give you a link. I don't think I mentioned at the top, but you can find everything mom's using today. There's a link that I put in the description up above on Facebook, down below on YouTube, or you can find it at the top of our website under featured on our live tutorials. You just look for this, the title of this live and the date. And that's that. Tony's in Cleveland, Ohio. She's in the path. Oh, sweet. Do you have any big plans? Lisa Avery said it's coming right through her backyard. Right Joanne's in your in backyard? Path. Yep. Of course, Lisa is in New York State. She's, yes, that whole swath is coming, coming yeah. right up and then the Adirondack. It would be cute to do this with the bugs. Oh my gosh, yes. Shannon said, I live in a duplex and my sweet neighbor has a cute spring floral wreath on her door and I want to paint one of the bugs lifelike and stick it on it and see oh if they know that's that a great idea. That is so idea. fun. That would have been perfect funny? for April Fool's. Nina said, thank you for putting a video out for the tape. She's dying to learn that technique. Oh yes, yes. And it's so easy. It really is. When you see it, you're going to be like, that's it? <laughs> How fun is that? Marianne's in the path in Indianapolis, and they're having a party on her front lawn. Oh, oh, Charlotte, great question. You were talking Monday about coming to Georgia. Can anyone attend that event, and how can we sign up? Oh, yes. It's it's the Painters Business Association. I'm sorry. I can put a link, actually. Yeah, you should put a link. Uh-huh. Um, so the, the PBA is, was founded, uh, this would be the fourth year that they have been doing these conferences. And you may have seen... Academy? Or, Painters Business Academy. Academy, yes. yes. It's, not a, it's not a professional bowling association. No. No. Um, so, um, so what it is, is these ladies have always done this in Europe. And... And the website will look like that. It will say UK. At the end, yeah, but it'll say not. UK. Um, but they're bringing it to the U.S. for the first time. There have always been sponsors of these events, you know, like the the sponsors, like IOD, like um, Fusion Mineral Paint, like just all different brands within the furniture painting and upcycling industry. So they will... I'll be, they will be represented there and I've never attended one, but I know, um, I've seen pictures and videos and clips from the ones in, um, in the UK. 
and you know Annie Sloan. They, they'll you know they. I, I'm not sure. I don't know for sure who is going to be speaking. It shows or on the website. I think it shows on the website. The website it? for some reason he has last year's UK information. The lineup. It shows the new like where. It oh, has the new dates and the shows new dates, where it is. But when you look at sponsors, it doesn't show. But I can tell you it'll be it'll be a great lineup of industry leaders and um, influencers. And um, anyway, so I, I will be there representing with Iron Orchid Design. With Megan and I will both be there with Sally and Josie uh, demonstrating products and answering people's questions but during the during um the whole weekend thing you will have uh scheduled like keynote speakers and people doing you know major demonstrations of um different products and uh types of um like furniture so and it's just a place to connect, learn how to take your business to the next level. Um, whether, you know, you have a brick and mortar shop or whether you are a furniture painter or upcycler that just, um, you know, sells from your own, you know, marketplace or whatever you do. It's the only multi-brand furniture painting event in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty special. I'm excited, and it's a beautiful location. Yep, Lanier Islands, Georgia. Yep, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And there's, if you go to the website that I just linked, you can watch a video that will tell you more about it. It's very exciting. I'm excited. I'm very excited too. It's a wonderful opportunity for us. I'm so thankful that we were invited to go along and. Um, share, you know, we, we love IOD. We're passionate about these products and how to use them. And, and it'll be exciting to share that with people and, uh, perhaps people that have never used IOD before or even knew, you know, like, well, maybe they thought, oh, well, I only use transfers on furniture. Well, no, let's show you how you can use them. Uh, for smaller upcycling or decor. Um, maybe you think, oh, but I've only ever used um, um, I would only use molds on a decor project. Well, you may very well see how that can be, how molds can be used on furniture projects. So um, we're there to show you the versatility of the products and all the ways that they can be used. And it's just another chance for mom and I to get on the road together. That's right. The good news <laughs> is I hear that we're going to have our own beds this time. We are going to. <laughs> that's right. So that's scary. We will miss each other probably from three feet across the room. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I have these all base coated with whatever, you know, my colors. And... Mm, mom is actually Al. Mom is planning an eclipse cocktail. She asked, "Is there a yes. drink snack recipe for the eclipse that we would make?" And Mom has a plan. I do. So it's very exciting. Yes, I'm very I excited. I have a, I have a little eclipse cocktail for the little one for the the younger set, and um, also. For me? And for Shirley, yeah. me, the younger set? Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. And then also for any adults that are attending and wish to oh, imbibe. It depends on your mood, Miss Shirley. <laughs> I'm not in the middle. Not today. <laughs> Shirley's not going to come. She's afraid that there might be too much traffic. I really have been hearing there is going to be a, yeah, a, little, second. a lot of traffic. I don't know where, but... Um. Some of you have been, uh, you know I'll never get the door. hopefully Sally's not listening, but I have been underplaying <laughs> the traffic because I'm hoping she gets trapped. Well, here. we joked with her that yeah. she, you might, she might end up uh, trapped on Shattucky Lane. There's worse <laughs> places to get trapped That's than with true. your best friend and her family that loves you. Right? Mm -hmm. 
I don't think anybody's going to be um, trapped in northern Yates. Or maybe Mama Town Sue. Are you starting to get worried that people might get trapped? <laughs> It's okay, Mom. We'll bring our tents, everything, just to be, just in case we get mm -hmm. trapped there with you. Yes. Remember last time we camped out there, mm -hmm. and it rained nonstop. Oh my! For gosh. three full yeah, days. We, yeah, we, we were so excited for that big camp. We did still have lots of fun. We had a lot of fun. That was last year. Yeah. Mom, so I want to do it again right now. Yeah. yeah. It was worse than this. That, oh, it, it was, was the awful. worst. It was the worst rain I've ever so seen, bad. ever. It was so kids, bad. Kids were waiting yes, in the water yes. at the end of the lake. <laughs> oh my it was bad. It was blowing sideways. Like it just. It wasn't even like where there was little breaks and we could get out and play for a little bit. Oh, you see, just Nothing. David like that tent just like built. It held up though. It, it held did. Up. It did. <laughs> we stuck it out and it, we had fun. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of rain. Oh, it rained. Boy, did it rain. But, man, we were under those tents playing games. Yep. We are inside playing games. <laughs> yep. Nobody broke and said, I'm going home. It's other than JR. Well, and actually, wait a minute. He couldn't even go home. He no. already was home. Yes. No, he left for a little while. But not long. No, I don't know where he went. It's a mystery. <laughs> where did JR go? During that rainfall. Oh, Tony yeah. said it's also the home opener for the Guardians and the women's final four is in town traffic in Cleveland oh, will be a nightmare. No. You know, that's what my husband just said to me, Sandy. What's that? The health department is telling everyone to treat the eclipse like a snowstorm coming. We're supposed to have our gas tanks filled and all of our groceries bought because yeah. there's supposed to be like a lot of price gouging that's gonna yeah. happen. You're kidding. And our like where we live, like why where the because people do that. Well, That's because it's terrible. It's supply and demand. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? All right. Get your IOD mold yeah, now. Yeah, because that's it. We're doubling the price for the eclipse. <laughs> oh. Yes, I thought they came. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to look at that again. Um, they're on the site. I just need to add them. It's like watching paint dry. It's our time. We're almost. What I really wanted to show you was this awesome way to make these twisty turny molds. Okay, so. I think we're good. The last thing we need to do is get these babies dry and then we're going to glaze them. But there you go. Look at, isn't that the cool? I just think this is so stinking cool. Like I said, it just gives these molds life. Oh, I forgot to do this one. Oops. Oops. Dirty. Dirty? I'm so confused. Why? Oh, maybe the back ordered ones finally came too because the invoice only said 18. Okay. Yeah, probably the back ordered ones. Yep. Yes. We finally got our little tiny attacher foam. Tiny blending. Tiny tools. blending tools. Sorry. They are so cute. They're so cute. Even grandma was here the other day. She didn't even know what they were. She said, now what are these? Oh my they gosh. So Shirley, cute. bring bring one over for journaling or if you do. And the little foams because the foams, they're so cute. I mean, I'm just so happy they're back or that they're here. How did I do that? Um, I guess I'll have to. Yeah, those are cute as can be. But it's great. You know how when you have, like, okay, I have black soot that I'm using for inking. I'm using um, vintage photo. I'm using coffee. Well, you can use different little tiny blending tools for all the different, for your different colored inks. 
I hope so too, Lisa. Mm -hmm. She said, my hope is that for all those people who leave their fur babies outside will be kind and bring them in. Oh, I know. Yes, it's resin, Karen. Sophia, oops, can you come over here, honey, and I'm just going to have you, oops, that one needs, hold on, hold on. Sophie's been off of school this week. She has been such a big help doing a lot of the little, so you have to keep this heat gun moving, like kind of keep it moving and to, until the paint dries on these pieces. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to start adding a glaze. This is Fusion's Antiquing Glaze. I just happen to love the color of this for mushrooms. And so I just have a little damp paper towel, a little baby wipe handy, probably paper towel. And I work right out of the cap. That's good. Let's, let's make sure all of these get dried completely. And I wet my brush and then I dip into my, actually I could use some fresh water too. Oh, Stephanie said she made some mushrooms and painted them and brought to the, them to the hospital with me to give to the nurses and staff that take care of me. That's lovely. How are you feeling today? Any better? I, I'm sure mom will post that cocktail recipe. Okay, so I just want this glaze on here. It's just gonna add a little shadowing and a little bit of depth. I take my damp paper towel and I blot away the excess, but I do want some of that glaze to remain in the crevices and in the shadowy parts of my toadstool. Okay. It's always amazing to me what glaze will do to something like this. That's three-dimensional, but then we're making it even more three-dimensional. Yes. And these little wires are very handy for I just think this is the perfect brown for yeah. mushrooms. It really is. Any suggestions on a brand or type of baby wipes? You know, um, JR picks them up for me at BJ's. That's, you know, that was my favorite kind of baby wipes when my babies were babies, Berkley too. and Jensen. They're very soft. Mm -hmm. And and we just buy them, of course, by the big giant box. Cheryl mm -hmm. said, have a black Russian for the eclipse and then switch to the white Russian when it's over. Oh, very good. Oh, no. We've got, uh, we've got spherical ice mold. She's really, she's really being a little uh, domesticated princess. I am. Which I love to oh, see. Oh, I gotta go next door too and see if they can create some cookies. I actually said, Megan, oh, I could make cookies. I no. could make sugar cookies. She's like, Mom, no. I will never do it. I want the half baked one pies. No, I'm not going. I bet JR would. No. But if I told him, he would. I don't want those. Well, I do. Well, then you go get them. JR, I'm gonna have JR go get them. And I'm not buying them. He will. Sorry. JR will. I, to me, it didn't sound. It didn't sound. It sounds so good. Yeah, interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I love the effect of it. What other things can you use the glaze for? Oh my goodness. I use glaze on furniture. I use it 
in so many ways to add depth and dimension to my uh, painted pieces. You could also use Pentart's Antiquing Gel, um, but I just like the color of this one. And, that's, and I love Debbie's DIY Dark and Decrepit Liquid Patina. That's also like a glaze. And I, so I use them interchangeably. I mix the colors sometimes just to get my perfect shade of brown. Okay, let me get the edges. So if you're doing such a good job drying everything, we have just a few more to do. And then I'll show you how I would lay these out in that beautiful oval wreath. That glaze does not come in a sample size like paint. You'll use it though. Oh my gosh, I just love it, yeah. Karen, I started to ask, but how did you, because she came a little late, how did you twist so easily since it's resin? Just do it quickly. Oh no, dear, you have got to watch the beginning. The resin, the wire is embedded right into the resin and before the resin cures, I use that wire to shape my toadstool. But yeah, you'll have to, you'll go, go back and watch from the beginning and you'll see how I did all of that. It surely does. She's like, oh, can you just leave it? I'm like, no, no, I need them soft <laughs> and just pulling. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna pull the wire right out. I know, right? I know. Okay, guys, check it out. We've got all of these glazed. Lisa Bouvier likes Lisa Bouvier Avery, sorry. Yep. Water wipe. She gets them at Walmart. They have no lint. Oh, that's a good idea. The replay video is usually alive is ready right after, right, Mom? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You can go right on YouTube and watch it or Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are all of our little mushrooms. Okay, so like this one here a little. I just want to make sure everything is dry. There's no shiny bits. <laughs> Kathy said, I just looked up from lunch and thought Ellen grew an extra arm. <laughs> oh, that is Ellen. Okay, let's get our wreath. Oh, I want to show you these. Look at the sizes of these right here. So they're little, so you don't have to use one of those big ones. And they're priced so that I you can use like, you can have six or 10 different ones for different color inks. Yeah. I just love this. They're and so cute. Here's all the little re replacement um, foam Here's a big one tops. with the comparison. Yeah, yeah, here's the big one. Look at that. I mean, brilliant. I just love it. Love it. Thank you, Shirley. All right, here's our wreath. I will not be gluing these in place. I just want to show you how I would arrange this. Um, okay, that's good, so thank you. Um, I felt like it definitely needed a little bird's nest in here. And I also love the contrast of that little bit of an aqua green. Um, egg. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've got nice long wires. You can make them as long as you want, but the longer wires enable me to twist these into my wreath um, wherever I want. Um, I can attach them this way, right? Pull it right back through the other side. Or um, I can even use my hot glue gun. So again, I'm not going to be attaching these. I, I need to like have a little more time to be able to, to do all that. But um, the wire is going to be your best friend. 
and it's so cool. Like I love having lots of options as far as the shapes and sizes of these. Uh, because like I said, you can use them for other projects as well. We were uh, big Animal Crossing fans, and, mm -hmm. and it just reminds me so much of the of the wreath, the, the, the little fall wreath. Remember the mushroom wreath, so? On Animal I Crossing? I don't think she went that far. She didn't? Oh, of course she didn't. <sighs> I've been just... begging my family to, please play again with me. You haven't even touched it. I know. I loved it. That was such a special time. I just found a picture popped up in my memories. Of uh, it was Jonathan and Augie's characters on Animal Crossing doing a puzzle together oh, <laughs> on Animal Crossing, like so which mimicked funny. our real pandemic life where yes, we were doing puzzles know, every day. I know. Oh so my cute. gosh, that was those were that was just the best. That was the best. Look how cute you guys. This is so neat. It's so neat. Wow. I love this so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. The fern is a part, it comes with the wreath. Yeah, this, the wreath. this whole wreath is, and it's a really nice wreath. It's got a nice hanging ring on it and very nice. In fact, it's ha there's one hanging at the top of the little porch in the front of the shop. Yep. That's how special that wreath is. That's what she chose. That's exactly right. So that is uh, basically how I would create my little mushroom wreath right here. But even by varying the shades of red, you can um, get some different looks. I think you could even go more orange. Yeah, I think so too. And then, of course, having the different dimensions to the re to the mushrooms, the toadstools, just really brings it brings it home. Now, if you wanted to, you could even do these toadstools. Remember when I made these? The, there's a YouTube video that Megan is linking um, for how I created these out of a foil armature and air dry clay and but you could totally add yes i have to find that you could add you know those more dimensional mushrooms as well i would probably and yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with the the spots uh, it definitely needs a little more there needs to be some more neutral um in here i think or plain so but there you go you guys that is how I create those resin twisty shapes of, of toadstool molds. I'll add that link on on Facebook. I'll make it the pinned comment there. And Joey, this is um, Fusion Antiquing Glaze that she used. You can find a link to that in the collection that I made for today. And again, I would just play with these and tuck and I just think it's so cool I think it's so cool I, I love, love it. it I love this all right what a perfect spring wreath and then of course if you wanted to you could add you know a bow or um whatever you know whatever your your thing is if you if you like that kind of thing thing <laughs> yeah but there they are how fun is that? Love it. Yeah. Love it too. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us, you guys. I hope that you found this very inspiring. So we won't be going live on Monday, right? Um, That's eclipse. Unless day. we go live from the cottage. During the eclipse. I mean we'll have the when is totality? kind of there. But I mean I want to watch it leading up yeah, to I know. the eclipse. True. Too. Yeah. We might not be live on Monday. Okay. I would say we're not going to be live on Monday, but maybe yeah. we'll do a makeup day. Next we will week. do a makeup day. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So okay. check out that Painters Academy. 
for sure. If you can join us, we would love to meet more of you in mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And check out that video on those other mushrooms too, because that other texture I think would be really nice in yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think I want to make some more of them and make them uh, more neutral tones, like like these. Beautiful. Or white, like white button mushrooms. Oh, <gasps> yes. I gotta make some. Okay, so she'll just open some fresh air dry clay. <laughs> She'll show you a picture of the finished product. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And uh, we will see you sometime next week for sure. Enjoy the but, eclipse. Oh, and watch for um, Friday. That tape, the, the aged tape video will drop on Friday over on YouTube. So um, I'll send a link to the texties and maybe send an email as well. And um, we look forward to seeing you there. Bye. Bye.